to be Israel Eco Care, your friend and partner in everything to do with the environment and conservation. Well, today we're taking you through a training organized by Grassroots and uh, Solidaridad. Come along and stay tuned. Good morning, everybody. Thank you for being here today for this most important presentation. Um, thank you to Roth for um, organizing this event, and uh, it is a great honor for me to be here with you today. Uh, my organization is called Soil for Climate. And um, we advocate for soil as a climate solution, for soil restoration as a climate solution. Um, the reality, however, is that most people in the world um, consider climate a kind of uh, existential problem or sort of a problem for someone else to worry about. The reality for most people is food and water security. And it just happens to be, thank God, um, that the climate solution through soil is also the food and water security solution. And so the methods that you take to improve the soil also turn out to be exactly the same methods to deal with global warming. So, um, you're not here today because you're interested in being a climate activist, although, although I am a climate activist. You're here today for food and water security. Is that more or less correct? So that's an affirmation? Yes, that's why people are here for food and water security, not to be climate change activists. Now, um, but it happens to be at the international level, uh, the international community is finally acknowledging that climate is a real problem and we need to do something about it. And are, they're finally beginning to wake up like, hey, soil is an important solution. And the people who are working with soil, uh, in my case, I work with the pastoralist community, they're actually on the front lines of helping to reverse global warming. So the, the summary is uh, the people, the pastoralists, the people who work on the land are on the front lines of helping to mitigate global warming. <laughs> And, and, and so from my point of view, you all are climate change heroes, whether or not you recognize yourself in that regard. But I recognize you that way. Now, um, eventually, there's going to be an economy around soil carbon. So soil carbon is going to have a financial metric associated with it. And, and the soil carbon market is already starting and it's in the range of around 20 to $100 per ton. So 20 to 100 US dollars per ton of carbon in soil. And in a minute, I'll, sh I'll show some slides that talk about the tonnage of carbon in soil. And 
And, um, you know, I, honestly, I, I'm, I admit that uh, before I came here, I really didn't know that much about Zambia, and I, I apologize for that. Okay, but but now that I understand more about the country, this this really is, in some regards, the perfect country, or a lot of really Southern Africa, um, is sort of the perfect place in the world to capitalize on the soil carbon market. Zambia, Southern Africa. And, and in, in part because it didn't already get heavily invested in the Western agricultural model of tillage and fertilizer and a single monoculture crop like maize or soy. And, and um, because there's still a strong pastoral community here, you actually have an advantage. So, um, because I, I think everyone here knows, and we'll, we can let's look at the data as well, um, animals are key to the whole thing. I mean, animals moving properly are the key to soil carbon, and it turns out they're going to be key to the soil carbon economy of the future and it turns out that the countries which didn't decimate their animal populations and didn't move a hundred percent to the sort of western model of turning whole parts of the country into corn or soy that those countries in fact will have the advantage in the next economy, in the climate smart economy, those countries like Zambia, in fact, will have an advantage. Um, so, Really, that's the most important point, is that soil carbon, well, soil, uh, okay, so just a little science. The, the, reason, the reason why soil is full of life is because of what's called organic matter. Well, organic, from chemistry, means change of carbon molecules. Soil organic matter is basically, remember in chemistry class, C dash, C dash, C, you know, change of organic compounds. That C is carbon. And it only came from one place. It came from the atmosphere. That's the only place it came from. And plants sequester carbon, and they put it, the, the roots The roots emit basically sugar. It's called root exudates. And for all practical purposes, it's a type of sugar. And so nature naturally mitigates global warming through photosynthesis. What is photosynthesis? It's literally just taking energy from the sun, and carbon dioxide in the atmosphere and water. I mean, that's it, right? Energy, carbon dioxide, and water. And it turns it into a complex molecule, C dash C dash C, whatever else. And basically, it's sugar. And some of it goes to the plant, but most of it actually goes back out through the roots and it feeds what's called the soil food web or the soil biology. Okay? So, that whole process of life, of making good soil through plants, through the rotation of animals, is the climate change solution because photosynthesis pulls the carbon out of the air. That's what it does. That's the basis of life. Okay. <laughs> So, um, I obviously have way too many slides, I'll just show a few, but 
Um, this picture of the Earth that we've all seen before from the Apollo programs decades ago or, um, is, is a wonderful picture because it's the full Earth. And it just happens. It's just a coincidence that it happens to be Africa and it happens to be Southern Africa. There's Zambia right there. So, so really, you could say, we went to outer space to take a picture of Zambia. Okay. Um, you know, but, but, but the fact is, Zambia really is perfectly located and has the perfect sort of uh, soil profile to really play an instrumental role in, um, in reversing global warming. And I'll just show a couple more slides, but basically, I know it's hard to see, um, but uh, these are actual roots of grass plants from the United States, from North America. So those are actual roots. Uh, they were grown in tubes. The plants were grown in tubes, and then they took the, the dirt off. So those are actual plants with actual roots, and they're, they're just put next to a backdrop of a cross-section of what the soil looked like. Hey, Miranda. And, and this is the, the soil, that's your climate change solution. That's carbon in the soil. Yeah. I wonder if I can do it over here. I don't really have a cursor. Um, how do you suggest doing it? Do it. We have a pointer. Just put your finger here. Yeah, but it's not. It's not. Uh, yeah. 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 It's, 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 Oh. <laughs> oh, like this. Simple, man. Uh, simple. The Americans just don't have a soft simple. Ah, there. There you go. Ah, you have to put it on there. Why is that here? I'm not going to Yeah, it's grass. Yeah, it's just. We zoom in. One answer, I'm not It's a cross section. So does everyone understand that now? I don't know how to do this anymore. Me and the Okay, do they get it? Ma, what do you <laughs> um, you know, I have a lot of slides and I don't know, you know how much more we want to get into, but basically this just, call, this just shows the carbon cycle. A certain amount of carbon uh, dissolves in water in the ocean and it, it becomes carbonic acid, which dissolves um, coral reefs. So that's bad. I mean, there are, natural, there are natural cycles of carbon between the ocean and the land anyway, of course. But we've been changing that natural cycle. And the land was a major, major uptake of it. Oh, you know what? There was, there was, a, there was another point I wanted to make about this. There was another point I wanted to make about this slide, besides the one I made before. And that's that when you, when you see the Earth from space, you realize how tiny and thin, just a tiny thin film, the atmosphere really is. 
So the the diameter of the Earth, okay, I talk in, in miles, um, the Western, but the diameter of the Earth is four thousand miles, and the atmosphere, you know, it is about five miles more or less. So, so, so basically, the atmosphere is one eight hundredth. For all practical purposes, a thousandth, that's hard to say, a thousandth of the diameter of the Earth itself. And so it, it's hard for us on here to think that we can affect the climate or we can affect the atmosphere. But when you realize how paper thin, not even paper thin, the atmosphere is in comparison to the Earth itself, you change enough of the surface area of the Earth and of the photosynthetic capacity of what's happening on the Earth, you certainly can change the atmosphere and the climate. And we saw this one, and then, <coughs> um, so, can I use this as a pointer? My, my Maasai stick. Um, so, this is the tons of carbon going into the air. This is an old graph. It's actually closer to 10 now. It was 8.9 when this graph was made, 10 or maybe even 11. But, but once it goes up, there's only three places it can go. There's only three sinks. We talked about sources and sinks. There's only three. One is goes into the ocean, it dissolves, it becomes carbonic acid, which is bad. The other, it goes into the atmosphere, and it, we, uh, it becomes global warming, which is bad. But the third is the uptake in biology and nature. That's natural, it does it anyway. Well, that's good. So, and you know, so these things happen naturally anyway, but what we've done is we've disturbed the balance. We're putting too much out now and then we're not taking up as much either. Too much on this side, not enough on that side. So, so what, what, again, what you're here for today, food and water security, right, is on this side. It also, from my point of view, it's, it's the climate change solution. So it, it's perfect, perfect match. Um, you know, I have lots of slides, but I think that's good enough for now. Um, I'd like my colleague, Dalmas, to say some words. Where's Ross? So, let me, um, Dalmas, I have some pictures of you in here. Hang on one second. Well, let me, let me just show a couple. Actually, yeah, let me just show a couple more. Uh, yeah, so, so there's, there's very good soil carbon, very high percentage soil organic matter. This is from Peru or Brazil. Oh, Peru, Brazil. Colombo, Polaca, America. And, uh, you know, the, the natural herbs are what created the healthy soil in the first place. 
Okay, but now we're using livestock as a proxy for wild herds. And then, um, and then here's the example from the Africa Center for Holistic Management in the Victoria Falls area of Zimbabwe. You can see it's a mixed species herd, goats and livestock, and look how dense they are all together. And then, this is just another, another example of the, of the, of the, the group herding, the holistic plan grazing. And then this is just an example of a restoration from South Africa. This is a Karoo. South Africa. Can people in the back see what this is? Nobody knows how many you wear now. There's literally, there's literally a fence with two different management. Why are not we fence? Now I show this slide sometimes, and I say, which side gets more rain? That one there, I got that boat. Now pull it over, guys. We just got money. Now go over the wizu. Now go where we can go. Now over a large enough area, you know thousands of square miles, the side on the left really will get more rain. It, it will, in fact, impact the weather. <laughs> yeah, so, so, again I say, which side is suffering from global warming? Right, so, so you see, Global warming is real. I'm not dismissing global warming. It's absolutely real, and it is also absolutely a crisis. Okay, but it is also true, okay, also, it's also true that land management exasperates or mitigates that problem. Yeah, please. I have the confusion continually. On the right, if you were to change it to the left, and maybe roll and help each other, I can't see how you're going to put the animals into the right. Because there's nothing left. So those animals will starve. They will end up being nothing. So I don't know how to get from there to there. Right, right. So there's a startup process, right? Right. Well, you, you have to start the management process. You have to look at what you have. You have to look at the animals. You may, you may in fact, have to put some hay just to get it started. But typically, typically what they do at the Africa Center is that the worst places they build the corral. They actually build the corral right there, right on the worst spot. And they keep them there for a week or two. Now, there may be grass somewhere else off the picture. Maybe way over there there's grass. Okay, so they feed there and they come here at night. And so it's called a movable corral or movable boma. So the boma itself is constantly moving. All right? Now, that you can actually, you can, this is this is this spot from from Google Earth view. You can see it from space. Um, let me just show a couple more real quick. Just to, you know. This is your classic example. Water, CO2 going down. Versus water running off and carbon dioxide going up. Menda, Aravunka, Muya, Let me just show. So I believe it because I've been there and this is the exact same spot. The exact same spot. 2014, this is 2010. 10 year difference. 
Zimbabwe. So they call this one the, the uh, elbow site. They call it the elbow site. See the difference? Can everyone see that? Same site. So again, your point of view, food, water, security solution. My point of view, climate change solution. And when the carbon markets take off, which they will, you will be paid not only for the maize and the, and the uh, nyama, but you'll be paid for the carbon. Absolutely. I'm proposing that it happen here and that Zambia become the leader of that market. Okay, let me, um, let me introduce my colleague, Dalmas. Oh, oh, one other just great thing that I just, uh, just have to show this slide. Um, the, the top slide shows the evolution of soil. It, it, the formation of soil is the coevolution of ruminants. The top slide. A slide the outside. Yeah. And then and then the bottom slide is this, the drop down of uh, carbon concentration to the atmosphere over the last 30,000 years, and now that perfectly corresponds with the, with the evolution of the soil. We hope you enjoyed that episode uh, where we talked about everything uh, concerning the environment and uh, conservation farming. And uh, if you have any questions that you want to learn about, you can leave them in the comment section of wherever you are watching this. Uh, if it's either on our Facebook platform or YouTube platform, we're very interactive and we will respond to your comments. And then we'll connect you to the right people who can send in your questions. Uh, stay tuned and uh, make sure you hit that subscribe button if you're watching this on YouTube. If you're on Facebook, make sure you share it with a friend, uh, like the page. Catch you in the next episode.